DDG episode 88. My name is Dave Hunt, and I'm joined by Michael Swick. How's it going, Dave? I, I cleared my throat right when you're doing the intro. Caught me off guard. I should probably look at the camera more. Uh, how's it going, Dave? Like, we're. we're, we're I thought about we're this. Yeah, I thought about, about this the other day. We talked like an average of two times a week in the whole time of June with E3 and some Patreon stuff we were doing and Ratchet and Clank. And now it's like July 6th, and we haven't talked to each other in the month of July. <laughs> I know it's only the yeah. sixth, but it was like as much as we were interacting in June, I was like, I haven't talked to Michael in a while. <laughs> so, yeah, we, we there were some days where we talked twice a day. Yeah, uh, we, we did. so yeah, yeah, definitely, and we might have more times like that because we'll have EA Play later this month, yep. so we'll probably cover that in some. E three is not over. The E three summer is yeah. not over. <laughs> there's still rumors that we'll get like a proper state of play not just the one we're going to talk about in the news, state of play that nobody wants full on. <laughs> yeah we'll, we'll get like an actual state of play of like first party titles so we'll probably talk to each other a couple times yeah so. All right. Obviously, we are Digital Days Gaming. We are a weekly podcast that uploads to your podcast services of choice every Thursday morning. Uh, you can check us out at digitaldaysgaming.com. Uh, you can subscribe through your podcast services. Leave a review, if possible, with words. It always helps. It's been a while since we had a review, so somebody hasn't done it yet. Help us out, please. Um, and you can, like I said, you can check the website or the show notes in uh, your podcast service, and it'll tell, send you to Discord and the Facebook group and all that stuff, T-shirts, PayPal, all that jazz is there, um, and as always, the sharing the show is the best way to help us grow. Um, so yeah, we're going to jump right into the news. Yeah, so as mentioned, there's a state of play coming this week. Uh, Sony did the thing that they've been doing that I greatly appreciate. They destroy expectations immediately and go right to the point, and they are going to do a 30-minute presentation. There will be no God of War. No Horizon Forbidden West, no PSVR, but we will get nine minutes of Deathloop and 21 minutes of third party in indie games. Uh, Deathloop, I feel like it's been covered quite a bit, so uh, I don't know if I necessarily need nine more minutes, especially with the game coming out, what, September, uh, October? Mm -hmm. But Not I unless it's nine more minutes of them actually talking about the game and how the function and gameplay loop's going to work. Yeah, yeah, I would probably want like a developer breaking in every once in a while to be like, here's how the mechanics work as opposed to just straight up gameplay of like, Hey, look, it's fast first person shooter. Well, I, the the, lo the longer, shooter. the longer they don't talk about this loop in the game, the more, <coughs> the hey, more, yeah, the more I'm fearing that it's going to be kind of like a returnal uh, bump in terms of mm -hmm. like time commitment initially like when you and i were first seeing this and i was talking about it and i said hey this will be really cool if it's 8 12 15 minute chunks that you can affect and finish and kind of checkpoint your story but if you're half an hour 45 minutes an hour and 15 minutes into something and all of a sudden you get surprised by something which appears can happen in the game where like the other assassin just drops down and just stabs you right in the back i don't know i'm just guessing but um and then you lose progress or the loop has to start over again. That's a little terrifying after Returnal. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but as far as I know, isn't it just asymmetrical? Like, it's not necessarily like you're playing actively against someone. But that's the thing where it's kind of confusing of like, they I, haven't really explained the mechanics. I thought that somebody's it, chasing you while you're also I've chasing other people. It, and I feel like I've heard both things. But okay. I, I don't necessarily know if they've been like the most clear on that or... There's this confusion on, on my end, which totally could be possible with all the games coming yep. out. Especially I'm at the point where Loop, I'm yeah. tired of seeing Deathloop. Like, I mean, we've seen it so much. Obviously, it got delayed, which is it's unfortunate. Out, yeah. yeah. Um, so that's part of the reason behind that is that maybe they're trying to make sure or or ensure that their marketing is good enough that it sells well. Um, because Sony's got a lot of money invested in this, and with it being from a, now an Xbox studio, which is irrelevant in the conversation other than it's just funny. Um <laughs> But there is a there is a pretty big investment from Sony on this, and um, like we'll talk about with the the state of play as well, like that we're talking about now. Um, without God of War and Horizon, like God of War not being in there is not a big surprise. Like Horizon, like if this game is coming in October or November, we need to know, and we need to know soon. <laughs> That's why I'm I'm thinking like the rumors of them having like a proper first party state of play have to be true if Horizon's going to be out in mm -hmm. November. 
because they need to get ahead of it somehow. I mean, and you got to do pre-orders, you got to do collectors editions, you got to build some hype. You, I mean, like like that. You don't have to build hype. It's kind of already there because of like how good the game, how how good the first game was. Um, but it's it's getting like it's July. <laughs> Like you can't mm-hmm. release this game in October at this point. Like I mean, you can, but that's not a, like a lot of time to, you know, companies. I mean, they, they like retailers are probably already know it's coming and they're they're probably purchasing it. You know, regardless. But it's PlayStation and they have the big dick energy to get away with being like, yeah, we can tell you guys it's coming out in two weeks and you guys are gonna buy it. Like because they they are they're confident enough in Horizon that they probably don't need to do the hype train that fast. Like they could just hit. I, th- I, st- I, I, I agree with what you're saying, but with as many games that are coming this fall, like people need to plan. Oh, do people need to plan, but I think Sony also, based on all their metrics for like when they post an Instagram photo yeah. or when they post a tweet, how much reach they have, they're they're really not worried. Like they'll hit the marketing push like when the football season starts, mm-hmm. you know, and we'll get the Horizon commercials during that if it's coming out in October, November. I don't think that they're really worried about having a long tail. I'm sure physical retailers want there to be like a long marketing cycle. Mm-hmm. But at this point, Sony is just like, was it 50% of their business comes digitally? And they would be super glad to push that. The initial concern for me, though, with this state of play and then with, you know, okay, so it's Deathloop. It's going to be kind of Bridge of Spirits some. Like we're going to see something else for it because that I comes out imagine, next yeah, That comes out too. next month. So maybe it's only like three minutes or four minutes. Um, so that's like half your state of play. And then a third party and some other indies. Cool. Um, it'll be interesting to see like 12 minutes like you mentioned. Like are they going to try to counteract Game Pass with a PS Plus? Um, you know, like that's just a guess on my part. I, the release date is too, not close enough to be the end of the month though, right? So I don't know if that's yeah, really like gonna... August 12th? Yeah, that sounds about right. Something well, like that middle August. Um, so like, there's like, there's that, I mean, but the, you know, from a a business side of it, like this is supposed, like maybe it's, you know, again, you said Sony's got big dick energy, but most people are looking at this as being Sony's counterpunch to Microsoft's E3 thing. I don't feel like that's it, but this is coming out right after, like less than a month after Microsoft's press conference and right on the heels of E3 in between E3 and in between EA play. And it appears to be early on, like somewhat lackluster. Now, maybe they'll have something in there that's surprising, but. Yeah, if they, and I was thinking about like, maybe they squeeze in Final Fantasy 16 mm-hmm. in here, some gameplay and stuff like that. But I think you would probably tell people that ahead of time to get them to tune in. Mm-hmm. And then you hit them with like, oh, here's nine minutes of death loop to like surprise yeah. people. I mean, unless they're uh, taking but... the whole, like, we've got a third party partnership to announce and then we'll announce it. And then they get to do the. They get to release their trailer and everything like that, like where Sony ends it with, "Hey, like ex- console exclusive, blah 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 blah." Yeah, yeah, they, they they could definitely like throw that in there. Um, I do like that they kind of just casually mention indies based on how last week went for them for yeah. for all the indie stuff that was going around. But I, I assume this has been in the can for a while, and it's not sort of a reaction. <laughs> to, do you think it's more indies stuff? than Kenna? Uh, yeah, I think so. I think you can throw in... I think that's when you throw in a trailer for like 12 minutes or mm-hmm. something. Uh, Annapurna and Sony have had a good relationship in the past, so it definitely could be a situation where it's like, oh, here's like some Annapurna games, here's some Devolver Digital games, and those you can kind of throw in several in like a three-minute span uh, based on how they usually do these things. You can, you can, you can fit in a lot of 30-second trailers in... Uh, that remaining 21 minutes that they have going mm-hmm. um, uh, solar then, ash like somebody like people have been talking about yeah. like a solar ash release date as an indie uh, what's that fighting game that you're looking forward to the oh, sifu, um, sifu yeah yeah, yeah. Uh, that probably deserves like a, a closer look to to see exactly what that game is in terms of scale because uh, right now it's just like oh that looks really cool but we don't know exactly you know what size of a indie game that is going to be uh, so there's definitely a lot of stuff they can throw in there, um, and yeah. I, I would imagine they're confident enough in Deathloop um, to just. Give or it they're this invested online. enough in Deathloop that they have to do this. At this point, I <laughs> would say those are hand in hand. Of uh, just like we're invested, we're PlayStation, we're confident that it'll, it'll sell just because you know PlayStation exclusive will sell. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to know if Deathloop's box art will have like a. a the blue label that says exclusive to PlayStation. 
Um, with the Xbox Studios like sticker on the bottom, logo on the back or in the the, the, the other corner. Mm-hmm. Yeah, I, I wonder how they're gonna play that just because you know <laughs> it is an exclusive uh, yeah. game, and we don't know how long that exclusivity window is. Could be six months, could be a year. Right. Uh, we just know it'll, it'll show up on Game so Pass here, when it does. I was gonna ask you that, like, so how, whenever the exclusivity ends, do you do you feel that it's automatically on Game Pass that day? Yes, okay. I think so. Uh, it's it, even if that. Uh, it's Even like, if it's ninety I days, I don't know the exact release. I don't know the exact release date, but if it's September twenty seventh, September twenty seventh next year, it's just on Game Pass right away. Just yeah. as just because that's the move Microsoft can play. Mm-hmm. Of just say, hey guys, we know you really and and we've seen in the past with like Square Enix and the Tomb Raider games, these exclusivity deals don't necessarily always work out for the publisher when right. they move it to other platforms. Mm-hmm. So microsoft is gonna have no choice with that loop other than to like hey it's on game pass and then just hope that's enough to entice people uh because there are more people <laughs> with playstations and xboxes so a majority yeah. of the audience is already hit gonna have played uh death loop by the time it hits other platforms mm-hmm. uh, because there's nothing else to play on ps5 <laughs> yeah yeah Exclu- but, exclusively on ps5 starve too yep. yeah um other playstation news uh this one uh, i was really excited for uh because i'm a weird business minded person of just what this could mean for the other studios but uh playstation has acquired nixies i believe is how you pronounce it so nixies is a studio from the netherlands that is known for porting pc games so their primary partner is square enix uh the recent works include marvel's avengers tomb raider trilogy and the deus ex games this is a very competent studio that specializes in porting games console games to pcs and they have a very good track record. Uh, Herman Holst said they have a passion for improving games and for delivering the best possible experience for gamers. Nixies will be a strong asset for everyone across PlayStation Studios, helping our teams focus on the most important goal, which is to create unique PlayStation content at the best possible quality. So I included that because that is exactly Mm -hmm. why you make a move like this based on what PlayStation plans to do with their exclusives. Uh, Put them on PC. Initial... Put them on PC, and specifically, Naughty Dog does not have to waste their time putting Uncharted 4 on PC. Uh, right. uh, the Days Gone developers do not have to waste their time putting Days Gone on PC or helping Naughty Dog put their game on PC. Well, Days they Gone have now... is on PC already. So No, no, but they yeah. had to work on their own game to put it on PC. Also, why they're helping Naughty Dog with The mm-hmm. Last of Us remake and why working on a new IP. So they had to split their team. So yep. this now I think this helps Sony MLB be... the show, like because mm-hmm. that's going to be coming to. That's, I'm sure that like the next platform is PC next year, um, and then yeah. eventually you know Nintendo in some form of capacity. Um, it just gives them another cog in their wheel to help it keep rolling, and it, to kind of do what Microsoft is doing and make themselves, you know, a little bit more stable um, mm-hmm. in terms of adding another you know pillar to your foundation of. You know, like, eventually, like, playing games on console is going to fade in terms of what we consider a console today. Um, And I think that, you know, through PCs or cloud archetypes or apps, um, that this will help because they're going to they're going to run very similar to PCs. Yeah, like they can then be that studio that helps these console focused developers learn new hardware. But in the meantime, they're going to be that team to where it's like, okay, cool, Naughty Dog's done with their, their game. Cool, give the assets over to Nixies, and Nixies will port it to PC. Naughty Dog can move on to the next project. They also get you their know, hands so. in there during development. So that now, yes. now somebody is talking to them about, hey, even if we're not planning right now to put this on PC, in order if to make it 100% easier for us to put it on PC in two years, you guys could do this kind of layering technique and it would make our lives a lot easier. <laughs> yeah. And then that turnaround time wouldn't be three years. It would be like, Hey, actually we can get the PC port day one or whatever. Yeah, somebody day, financially, you know, strategically day, day 366 after launch, you know, yeah. like where it's like, or, you know, two years after launch or whatever it is. Yeah. So this is a smart move. I know this will probably piss off like the Sony fanboys that do like the, uh, the, uh, the petitions uh, for any time a PC port is announced, but this is a good move by Sony. And this isn't going to affect like Herman Hulse says it, this allows the PlayStation studios to do what they do best. And that's just 
work on unique PlayStation games, they don't have to worry about like, all right, cool, we just wrapped up this console release. All right, let's get back in the trenches and try and get this on PC. They mm-hmm. they, they now have a someone in the artillery. They have that platoon studio that is just going to bounce between work. And if Sony's willing to do it or PlayStation's willing to do it, there is revenue to be made from the studio in between projects if square enix is like hey we really trust them mm-hmm. to work on our pc ports can we contract them out yep. and then playstation has another revenue stream of like hey the studio is so good they can handle multiple projects um let's see if square capcom or uh, but, any other studio yeah. wants to use them and it, make it also it also means like final fantasy is a huge franchise that has a great relationship with playstation but it also has a huge PC base, obviously, because of it being like a MMO or MOBA. Um, but this also means while 16 is being developed, and that Nexus can kind of be, in, you know, like in there with, in the meetings with Sony and Square about this game, and and you know talking about the PC with them. And to your point, probably working on the port to PC with Square, who they've already worked with, mm-hmm. <laughs> and making sure that the transition. Because I'm sure it's like similar to like the Death Stranding deal where like Sony's paying for some exclusivity or, you know, like obviously like back the truck up to maybe console exclusive. But they're getting some like possibly getting some of the revenue from PC or saying, you know, like a power move from Sony. Shocking. Of like, hey, we own the studio that's really good about porting your games, like you said. Well, here we can subcontract that out to you, but we uh, we get our exclusivity. Yeah. <laughs> it's like, and- no, and, and that gives Sony another bargaining chip when they're mm-hmm. talking to these like third-party studios of just like, hey, we really want this game to be exclusive. You can release it on PC. Also, we have an artillery studio mm-hmm. who can totally port it to PC for you, and we'll give that service to you for free as long as we get exclusive on the console for whatever di- uh, amount of time. So it gives them like a bargaining chip that they can use if they need to, mm-hmm. uh, though I'm sure no company is really going to put that kind of pressure, but a square might. But I mean, if it, it could be, it could be something that makes or breaks an exclusivity deal, because like Mm -hmm. if they're talking to Microsoft, Microsoft's already telling them it has to come to PC. So now Sony's like, you already want this on PC. We know you want it on PC. We just want it to be on our system only. And now we have somebody to help you put it on PC. Now the only reason, now that just comes with a caveat of nine month exclusivity, or whatever it is. Exactly. Yeah, Yeah. and then they can you know work on partnerships, and this can really expand what they can do. So this this is a good move that like. People should be happy about. I saw some people angry that it's like, oh, this means more PlayStation games are coming to PCs. This just means more PlayStation games coming sooner. Yeah, uh, I mean, if you're upset that general. PlayStation games are coming to PCs, like you're upset that somebody else gets to experience a great game just because it's not on your platform, you got a bigger problem. Yeah, yeah, you, you have significantly <laughs> bigger problems. But we know those people are out there, and you see the petitions. Uh, so yeah, a smart move by Sony uh, gives them a bargaining chip, gives them a very decent studio, uh, and. I guess this is the move that they make in between when they announce the Blue Point acquisition because we thought the Blue Point. I don't know, man. Blue, Blue Point was pretty loud last week. <laughs> yeah, they they were, but maybe we'll get something. I, what, um, okay, what do you think? Okay. What do you think based on what Blue Point was saying last week? Not saying, you know, indirectly saying, like, "Hey, we're independent." Like, if that deal is almost done, like some people believe, or is done, why are they talking like that? That could either be misdirection. Uh, because they want their time in the spotlight, uh, and Sony also wants to probably give them time in their spotlight. Or it legit means like, hey, we're going to be independent because we make more money off contracts uh, mm-hmm. than we do if we're purchased. Um, so it's either misdirection or it's you take it at face value. And but why was that exactly image made? It. Like that's crazy. Like somebody made yeah. that image. Somebody put yeah. all that PlayStation characters in the background. Put you know the um, Demon Souls character. Sorry, I don't know his name. Um, in the background, yeah, it's okay. Uh, put the Demon right. Souls character front and center in the background with the PlayStation Studios logo and the Blue Point logo and Welcome to the Team or Welcome Home or something on it. And it was tweeted from an official account. Which yeah, means someone in that line <laughs> thought that, and and either it means someone's in trouble on PlayStation's team, yeah, on or someone doesn't know how to like, read like abbreviation on a JPEG. <laughs> yeah. Uh, they 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 jumped the gun and like just decided like oh hey this is this is probably gonna happen so let me just get the asset ready just in case. Um, now don't get me wrong, can... companies make images for stuff that they never are gonna do. Like that happens. Like, yeah. I don't. I mean, it, it, got, it, yeah. Like it, I agree. It, it made like, it to the social media person. Right. Like 
Jim Ryan's not running the Twitter account. Right. He probably doesn't even know the password and couldn't get access to it even if he wanted to. <laughs> so, like, the fact that that made it to the social media account, they're like, hey, we're negotiated with Bluepoint. It's either, like, a silly person who jumped the gun or the information got that far down the chain. Do you that... think, like, this is just me speculating right now, but do you think that that image leaking pissed off Bluepoint? They're like, you know what, forget it. We don't want to do it. Um, I don't think anyone would throw away like hundreds of millions of dollars like that, but I can totally see them being like, hey, we wanted our own time in the spotlight sort of scenario, uh, mm -hmm. which is rightfully so. Of just like, 100%. Hey, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. Like, I, we don't want to be sandwiched in between the house mark and the, the, the Nixies deal. Like, we're working on something important for you guys. We've worked on some of your biggest franchises. Can we get like a week? where people are talking about us right. that should uh, be something like in state of play like where they get to it like they get to announce their new game and at the end it says placed made by playstation studios blue point or something like yeah exactly that's could, how or, it or should be the, done yeah the playstation studios logo pops up trailer for something amazing and at the end it said made by blue point right and then it's just like oh okay cool this is uh and then you have that voiceover of like the really chipper happy person being like and the, the playstation uh exclusive studio um so uh, that's PlayStation uh, doing their their latest acquisition. I I, I still think Blue Point's coming along. Uh, that price could have possibly changed. Uh, I'm gonna put something in here <laughs> in the doc last second. Are we talking uh, about college kinda... football again? Like this is recruiting. Uh, apparently, <laughs> uh, so uh, we talked. To, uh, was it like a month ago? Two months ago? Yeah, yeah, about, yeah. Uh, Kojima has was negotiating with Xbox uh, on making exclusive games. Uh, apparently, uh, according to Jeff Grubb, uh, you know, like insider mm -hmm. <laughs> Jeff Grubb, uh, that the deal has reached a letter of intent. So <laughs> it sounds like it's pretty much like letter of intent is like as close to a done deal as you can without it being like a done deal. Um, this is at this point, you just put weird, you know, like clauses in a contract last second to, to finalize. Uh, but Kojima has signed a letter of intent with Microsoft um and it looks like what won him over was they pitched the cloud computing aspect of microsoft uh and what they can do with the cloud and kojima likes experimental sort of things he likes being on a cutting edge so uh it sounds like he is going to be making an exclusive game with xbox this sounds like it could possibly be even like a multi-game deal uh so it could be a franchise uh, but this isn't a letter of like Kojima Productions is now purchased by Xbox. This is he wanted to stay independent and signed a deal with Xbox. I mean, this this um, this has Microsoft owning the IP, paying Kojima to make it written all over it. Oh, for sure. Yeah, yeah. this this would be like that. Like I have a feeling Death Stranding is all, is owned by PlayStation. Uh, you know, sort Correct, of thing. Yeah, and I, I think agree. Kojima's fine with that uh, as long as he can make his weird, you know, like weird experimental games. Um, it sounds like also, um, there's something I, I forgot to put in the news a couple weeks ago, just cause it was, it didn't seem like that big of a deal. Uh, but Microsoft, um, they hired Kim Swift and mm -hmm. Kim Swift, if you're not familiar with, she is like the creator of portal and she worked on left for dead for valve. Um, she's worked with, I think Google, uh, and stadia before this. Uh, and she's been like bouncing around, uh, kind of like a liaison between like tech, tech companies and developers. So Xbox apparently signed her specifically to be like a handler for Kojima, kind of like how we saw Cerny do for Kojima Andrew when House. he worked with PlayStation. Oh, Andrew House, but like Cerny's the one who took him studio to studio. Yeah, yeah. Andrew House uh, is the one that like was able to obviously to communicate with him and the relationship with yeah. House and Kojima is it was a huge factor, which is why House yeah. got to announce it. Yeah, uh, but like it basically seems like this has made it to the point where they are willing to hire someone else, which is already going to be expensive, to just handle potentially working with Kojima and getting this game off the ground. Because uh, I would imagine he probably is going to have to switch engines. Yeah, she's uh, like the she's using... like the finisher where they like yeah, where there's like this big fight in the room and she comes in there. It's like okay, so you said this and you said this. This is where we're gonna meet. <laughs> like yeah, yeah, exactly. <laughs> and this is your engine. Yeah, <laughs> these are the engines you can choose from, and this is what you're gonna do. Basically, what we saw like Andrew House made the deal, and Mark Cerny then took him from studio mm -hmm. to studio of like, do you like this engine? Do you like this engine? Okay, we'll go with this engine. Right. Uh, so they, they're, it looks like they're making moves and getting closer and closer to signing Kojima to an exclusivity, exclusivity deal for maybe one or more games. 
um, and we'll probably uh, be a couple years away from hearing about that because it's going to be another Death Stranding yeah. situation where like well, we're it's get like the it hasn't it hasn't started. Like, I mean, development yeah. maybe is like really, really, really early on. Obviously, because I mean, like there, there's a concept and maybe something that functions and moves in maybe I don't know Unreal Five or something like that, and him just showing like, hey, this is my intention. Obviously, and then okay, like now we want it to be a Microsoft Game Studios game, and like you said, here you want to use Rare, you want to use three four three, you want to you know whatever it is. Yeah, and then also just being like, hey, you have cloud computing soft, mm -hmm. cloud computing technology. I want to implement that in the game, and then who knows how long it's going to take to implement that into the game, as well. But it at least we now know exactly where they are in terms of just like. This is going to be years away. We'll probably get a logo or some basic announcement in the next couple months. Kojima Productions uh, cross Xbox Studios. Blah. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, and then they might overhype it and be like a three-game project, and you know, coming uh, in the future. On top of uh, that, but... though, like I wanted to, because Kojima left Konami, and we we it, it broke like right after we recorded last week. But Konami signed that deal with Blooper Team. Yes. Um, to make what is believed to be more Silent Hill, right? Yeah. Yeah, so, make a, a Silent Hill. Yeah. yeah. And there's been a lot of talk about like, oh, well, like blooper team's not worthy to work on Silent Hill. And, and my whole take on this, and I put this on Twitter and, and whatever, sometimes my tweets get tons of interaction, sometimes they get nothing. It's fine. Um, we know that Konami is a pain in the ass to work with. <laughs> like that's a proven fact. Yeah. Um, and you know, everybody's like, oh, Konami could have got any studio to do this. And they might've, maybe they went to Naughty Dog or maybe they went to somebody yeah. at Sony and said, okay, this is what we want. We want A, B, C, D, and E. And Sony studios are like, get the hell out of here. Yeah. <laughs> and blooper team's like, okay, we can do that. And like, well, well, no, like they, there's a chance Konami was like, we want to make a Silent Hill game and here's the budget. Yep. And they went to multiple studios and those studios were like, we can't do shit with that budget. But Bloober who make like indie to double a games mm -hmm. were like oh we can we can fuck with that budget mm -hmm. like we, we can do something uh with that uh and then you just have to hope they give them enough creative control uh, yeah. uh but that destroys any of the abandoned is a secret mm -hmm. silent hill game that playstation has acquired so uh what happened with that trailer it got like delayed delayed yeah it's sounding more and more shady with that because if you're trying to get something posted on the PlayStation store, you have to go through like certification. It needs to go through QA, all that stuff. Day of being released. He's like, Oh, it's not done yet. We're still doing some translations and working on some bugs. It'll be out Friday, Friday hits. And then he's like, Oh, it's still not done. It's going to be delayed until August, which just makes it sound like this is a huge mess. Mm -hmm. And I really think PlayStation kind of needs to come out and be like, they're an independent studio. Like, do not. We have a we have, we have a partnership with them on our on our storefront. That is all. They're, they paid us twenty five thousand <laughs> yeah. dollars to get this on the storefront, uh, or something. Because at this point, it just seems sloppy. Uh, and people might be blaming Sony, and there's no reason to blame Sony. Yeah, Sony's just like, no, they knew the QA system is going to take this many weeks, yeah. uh, and then they can't just throw in a a day one patch unless that goes through certification as well. Right. Uh, so it just seems like uh, a studio might be in over their head and they, they saw an opportunity like to get people excited for their product and they jumped on it and it might backfire on them. Mm -hmm. There is a still chance they can turn this around and then it could be a secret surprise from Sony, but it's more and more looking like it's not that case. Um, but yeah, so that's the update on Kojima, Konami, yeah. <laughs> Abandoned, uh, Blue Box. It's all one like big gift now, <laughs> like that. We don't know what it's going to be when we open the gift. Yeah, yeah, it's we'll we'll find out eventually. Twenty twenty four. God, yeah. Um, all right, uh, the last story, uh, which is I guess the biggest one, but it's really not. Uh, Nintendo have announced their new Switch. Uh, it's it's the same Switch, but it's got an OLED screen. Uh, specific details on this is the new Switch uh, will have a 7-inch OLED screen, which is an increase from the 6.2-inch LCD screen on the current Switch. Uh, it's still going to be 720 portable, 1080 docked, uh, no battery improvement from Switch 2.0. Uh, internal memory is uh, doubled from 32 to 64 gigs. Has It actually has a full adjustable kickstand uh, for portable mode, and the new dock has an Ethernet port. It will release October 8th for 349 
Dave, initial thoughts on this? I, I mean, I if you play in portability, and... if you play in handheld mode, this is great. Yeah. If yeah, you don't, pretty much. I don't know what to tell you. Like, um, it's yeah. it, it's it's weird. Um, like it's it it is it's weird and it's not weird. Like Nintendo's done this with 3ds, 3dsi, 3ds Lite, 3d you know, 3ds XL or whatever. Um, yeah or 2DS to 3DS that, like, some of your games play, but, like, the other, you know, like, they've done, and they've come yeah. out and said, like, everything's going to work. Like, this is just a, like, an OLED version of it. Um, the the better, the bigger internal memory, again, is great for portability. The bigger screen is great for portability. It's going to affect battery life, whether you believe it or not. It's going to. Um, improve it, yeah. I think it's going to affect it more. Like, does no, it? No, no, so OLEDs are more battery efficient. Okay. Uh, so... Uh, but they didn't put anything on the box to say one way or the other. Yeah. So, um, uh, yeah. I'm a little disappointed that there's not really any core changes to Joy-Cons. I'm tired of the drift crap. Um, I, I So I'm, as someone who owns like six Joy-Cons, I'm kind of fine with them not changing to Joy-Cons because I don't want to buy more. Uh, I was really worried that the Joy-Cons were going to be new Joy-Cons, but they said you can use the same ones. I would be 100% fine with these joy cons work better like it, it was a great opportunity for them to make better joy cons that still work on your switch and your and your oled switch like it was a great chance yeah. for them to be like better thumbsticks you know more you know like they i mean even though they just said something like that like the kickstand was great like it like because i know that mine snapped off at one point in time and i don't i don't even know if it's on there um because i mean owen has a switch light but in terms of just the way that nintendo deals with their hardware like this is intriguing enough. I don't like the price point, um, but I have a theory on that. Yeah, uh, for the price point, they're preparing people for the pro. No, so I, I, what I think is going on with the price is they still have enough of the current Switch model, which is like Switch 2.0. Uh, people forget that they improve mm-hmm. the battery life on the Switch. Mm-hmm. I think they have enough of those in stores and in their inventory that they're like, okay. We'll just charge fifty dollars extra on this one, so we can have, so they can sell through their stock of the uh, current Switch models, and then when those are sold out, they'll be like, "We're dropping the price on the OLED model to two ninety nine, mm-hmm. and then this will just replace the the two ninety nine model." Or it gives them I an excuse only... to make it two forty nine too at the holidays, like the original Switch. Yeah, which they definitely could, but I, I, I see Nintendo being little crafty this this 349 one is probably so fucking profitable for them Mm -hmm. because the lcd screens were actually kind of getting expensive to produce because they were the only ones using those lcds um so now using oled which is on like every major phone is is going to be helpful to them so i think we're going to see a price drop on this relatively fast but they have to sell through the stock of the current iteration which they'll do this holiday season so i have a feeling march uh these will be now to 299 yeah and from my perspective of being a multiple switch owner right now i bought it during the pandemic the second one for owen um he's not using it as much as he originally was so there's a lot going on in my head there was rumors in june like gamestop leaked the new switch which obviously was this um and like if you trade this in you get this much and you trade this in you get this much like i totally could see myself trading in my original switch and the switch Lite for this because I don't even think my original Switch has the... Because I bought both of them secondhand. If I can get the same value that I got for them that I bought them secondhand or an upcharge for trading them in towards something that GameStop wants me to get, like, I'm all for that. Like, and they, yeah. in newer hardware, like, just you know, new Joy-Cons, new hardware, new fresh battery. Um, I would assume that this would work in in the third-party docks as well since they're, the, yeah, like, in terms USB-C. of the core, the core functionality of the Switch isn't changing. Um it's good. Uh, it's it's an okay move. I don't I don't hate it. Um, I don't love it. This is uh, the type of move where if your current switch broke and you're like, all right, I'm gonna buy another one, and you have the current switch and then the OLED switch sitting next to each other, you're probably gonna pull the trigger on right. the OLED one for fifty dollars more. And that's really what this is for. This is just kind of like a placeholder until they can discontinue the current model, and then they can prepare people for the pro. And I think the pro is going to upset people because I think the Pro is going to be a clean break, kind of like how, yeah, there were six iterations of the DS, but then they had a clean break, and then they moved to the 3DS. You think this is going to be Switch 2 instead of Switch Pro? Yes. Yeah. Yeah. But knowing Nintendo, they'll probably name it Switch Pro Mm -hmm. um, sort of thing. 
uh i think this is just a temporary thing especially with the pandemic still fucking up like mm -hmm. all sorts of shortages for conductors like this is a thing that they're like hey we have enough of the current chipset purchased and warehoused that we can slap these o these OLEDs on that no one's competing for like they are for the semiconductors and all the other processors but uh so i th think this is just an in-between move depending on how close the pro is like you said like wouldn't breath of the wild 2 be waiting for that pro like wouldn't they wouldn't uh, they be developing it on the pro i don't think nintendo cares about like if it runs, it runs. Like, I don't think Breath of the Wild looks like anything that's like, oh, man, that needs the extra horsepower. But do you really uh, see them releasing a Zelda sequel in November of 2022 and releasing a new console in November 2023 that Zelda doesn't work on? Um, I mean, it could be backwards compatible, but I don't think it's going to be forwards compatible. If, okay. If that makes sense. Okay. Uh, so, like, your Switch games will still work on the Switch Pro. It's just your Switch but Pro. But the new Metroid Prime the is going to be on Switch Pro only. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. I, I think that's why this move is the way it is, uh, which is a little disappointing. But as someone who has a, a launch switch, uh, a switch 1.0, uh, this has a battery life increase. That's mm -hmm. intriguing. I play the switch mostly in portable. This has an OLED screen. I love my Vita with an OL OLED yeah. screen. So this is intriguing to me. And like you said, it, it will work with everything you already have. You already have for your older switch, your, your multiple joy cons, yeah. your new holder. Yeah, uh, the holder is a little questionable. It's there's a millimeter difference uh, in size, so I'm just wondering exactly uh, what aspect uh, the difference is. Mm -hmm. uh, but yeah, it'll it seems like it'll work with pretty much anything that was made for the current Switch uh, for the most part. Uh, and I'm interested to know what like better speakers are, but I think it's just because the screen seven inches yeah. that it's just a little different that the speakers have a little bit more room to to be installed. Um, and the 64 gig thing is also nice just because uh, I'm constantly juggling mm -hmm. uh, stuff between the console storage and the SD card that I have. So this helps with that. Uh, and as mentioned, the kickstand uh, is so much better yeah. uh, than the current one. Just to be able to adjust the tilt, the one. even to, mm -hmm. to different tilt functions, depending on where you're playing or if you're outside or, you know, like lights and you know, all that fun stuff. Yeah. Uh, but realistically, I like... I don't see there being three switch models on the market at one time right past this holiday. Cause I don't think anything's gonna happen with the switch light and then you're gonna have a switch and then a switch OLED. And I don't even think it, the switch has a special name, which I think is a telling sign. Uh, this doesn't have like, Oh, this is the switch OLED, which would be an ugly name, or this is the switch pro. This is the Nintendo switch. Mm -hmm. This will be the switch that you can buy and the only switch available outside of the light uh, going forward. Uh, so, uh, I would hold back on buying it this, this holiday. Cause I really think this will be two ninety nine by March, mm -hmm. uh, once they sell through the old stock and Nintendo probably doesn't give a shit that they're putting it a little at a premium right now. Cause they'll probably just be bought by scalpers <laughs> anyways. So mm -hmm. they'll get their money no matter what. Um, and then it'll just have to go from there. Launches on the same day as Metroid dread. So if they do a special dread bundle uh, they might be able to get me a little mm -hmm. a little sooner all right uh, but uh so what yeah. we're playing and watching um i know yours is a little shorter than mine so i'll let you go first yeah uh mine is just kind of looking for my next game uh since i finished uh ratchet and clank i i went back back to tony hawk just because i wanted to buy it on the the switch but i was just like i have the best like uh version of tony hawk so i might as well just play it on the the ps5 uh, so I've been playing uh, a little bit of Tony Hawk, um, and then I've just been looking for my next game. I'm caught up between either doing Psychonauts or Dead Space. Uh, those are both backwards compatible, compatible with Series X, and they're on Game Pass. Uh, and then I also have Psychonauts on a PS5, so it's really a debate on, like, who's backwards compatible is the best, and I, I know it's, the answer is the Series X uh, <laughs> for that particular one. Uh, but the PS4 Psychonauts has trophies, and I'm more attached to trophies than I am achievements. Uh, so uh, just kind of working on... But your your achievements and... could unlock your ability to pay for Game Pass. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> and I told Sarah achievements can buy Sephora gift cards. And she's like, you should play on uh, the Xbox a little bit more. Because uh, they have weird programs yes, in there. Yes, they do. So. Um, so yeah, just been playing those games uh, for the most part. I did start 
of replaying Battlefield Bad Company just to see how well those games have aged. I've been messing around with Game Pass, basically. Okay. Because uh, uh, there's nothing new to play right now. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, I get it. Like, uh, yeah, so I, I downloaded a bunch of Game Pass games, and like I was like messing with Bad Company. I was just like, I, I remember this being fun, but it is kind of rough, so I might just jump to Bad Company 2 to see if that has any sort of like improvement. The biggest thing I've noticed with those shooters, like with FPSs over time, is that the guns... This is going to sound weird to say. The guns have gotten smaller. Uh, yeah, guns were a little beefier yeah. uh, in those games. <laughs> in terms of, like, if you're talking about, like, real estate, they take up on the yeah. screen sort yep. of thing. I, I mean, that's a huge thing that I noticed from uh, uh, Destiny, his brain bringing a couple of Destiny 1 weapons into Destiny 2. And, like, there's a scout rifle that just came back, and it was, like, one of the go-to scout rifles in Destiny 1 for a long time. I put it on in Destiny 2, I'm like... This gun is huge, like on the screen yeah. in terms of like how much it takes up. I'm like, what? Like, did I did I play with this with like 70 field of view, and now I'm playing with 105 field of view, and this gun is still big? Like, <laughs> I was like, wow. Um, with that, and I noticed that sometimes when I've gone back into some of the older games, like, um, uh, like I think I went back and messed around with Bad Company like years ago with like an extra life thing or something. But yeah. Um, so I was just like, and, and 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 they still, and obviously modern gaming has evolved tremendously, as we all know. But they always felt heavy in terms of like movement. Yeah, it, so yeah, that, that that is definitely something I felt in uh, Battlefield uh, Bad Company One. Uh, just everything just kind of felt sluggish and heavy, uh, and. I don't know if I'm going to stick with it. Mm -hmm. uh, I think I'm just going to go with like Psychonauts just because I'm kind of into like a platformer right now. Like we right. started to replay Spyro, uh, Reignited Trilogy over on the PS4 uh, after Ratchet. So I, I might do that. I really wish I could play Sly Cooper on something without hooking up my, my PS3 again. Mm -hmm. uh, but that that's not really an option right now. And I don't even think the trilogy, the remake trilogy is on PlayStation now. I'd have to look at that might be worth subbing the playstation now just to replay those because i have good internet mm -hmm. um yeah so it's just mostly that i'm waiting for uh, a plague tale uh to go live on the store which i believe it did a couple hours ago yep. um i i own that so i'll just get the upgrade i just hope there's no bullshit problems you have with ps plus stuff where like you can't download the game because you have the ps4 plus. So, like you, oh, no, just the idea, like, you know how, like, it, it, the new game comes out, debuts on PlayStation Plus, and then you have to go through extra steps because you're like, no, I want to buy this game with my own money. I want to own this, but it, like, constantly flashes the PS Plus. So I got to see how that's set up for Plague Tale because I, I kind of want to replay that and see how it looks on PS5 because uh, that, that is, like, one of my favorite games of last gen. So I have to go, go play that again. I'm actually going uh, to but, play it. Uh, I don't know if I'm going to play it on Xbox or on PS5. Probably on PS5 just because I have a Series S. Yeah. And also the one that's on Game Pass is just the Xbox One version. It's not the Series. Uh, oh, I thought it's just upgrade. automatically upgraded through smart delivery. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily work like that for, for uh, uh, Game Pass stuff, unfortunately. Yeah, Curry, I might stream that when I play. Uh, I'll have to decide. Um, and this cough has to go away. <laughs> Yes. Before I, before I stream, so once that happens, that's when you'll see me stream. Um, but uh, have you been watching anything? Uh, no, just movies for every movie ever. Just watching random <laughs> uh, foreign films and uh, foreign recently films. watched oh, God. Uh, a rom com called Always Be My Maybe, which I really really enjoyed. Uh, so yeah, check out every movie ever to see what else I'm doing besides video games. All right, so uh, watching just because my wife reminded me in the chat and she's gonna blast me if I don't. Um, and Michael's going to laugh at me for this anyway. So uh, my wife has not been feeling very good this week, um, and it's also been tremendously hot. So I'm setting up a bunch of excuses for this. So um, a lot of background TV has been going on in our house of television that we just don't care about. It's on, and it's just kind of like background now. Uh, and on Paramount Plus, my wife started, and I, and of course, like over time, like I've been putzing around watching YouTube videos or in the other room and uh, now um, usually about before we go to bed we watch one or two episodes of Dallas Cowboy cheerleaders making the team okay. <laughs> I started mythic quest by the way oh too, nice uh, which is really nice yeah uh, it's about two episodes into that the first season or is second that like season? The uh, first season. I okay. haven't watched it before. Oh, okay. uh, Sarah got a new iPhone and it came with Apple. Yep, Plus that's good. Whatever, so My daughter like keeps buying new Apple products and that's why I keep getting it. So. Yeah. Uh, that's the. Is that like the country music television reality show from like 10 years ago? Or no, this is new? like 
like trying out for the Dallas Cowboys as a cheerleader and the yeah. amount How of st- is the show? like 2018, 2019. Okay. Okay. Um, and the kind of just the, the process that they go through and where people come from to, to, um, to attempt to make this team and the, the high regard that they hold themselves to. And it's, it's fascinating more just because the people stories, like there's a girl that's on trying to make the team that um, works as like a sign language person. Um, and just like, any reality TV show that you know does a good job of this or doesn't do a good job of this, but getting you to almost you know care about the character for like that quick five minutes, or not even the character, but care about the person, um, mm-hmm. and she's still like it's not like I've, I've sat there and said oh you can't watch the next episode without me. It's not to that point, but when it's on, like something will happen and I'll look up and pay attention for five minutes, and then all of a sudden, I'm like next thing I know, it's like twenty minutes has gone by. <laughs> yeah. So that's happening to me. Um, yeah, apparently my wife said it has 16 seasons. <laughs> That's a lot. Yes. Yeah, so that probably is the show I was referring to from like 10 years ago. I just didn't know it lasted 16 seasons. Yeah. I'd imagine that is, yeah, that would probably be the same show. Um, And then I got back on the, for whatever reason again, I got back on the Smallville bandwagon, got to like season four where they started like, Oh, it's because Chloe was convicted this week. So, uh, <laughs> yeah, that's what, that my wife said that too. Um, she's like, yeah, that girl has got three years. And I was like, oh, okay. Um, 17. <laughs> yeah. So uh, it looks like they're starting to introduce more superheroes. There's a Flash uh, Easter egg. Okay, yeah, yeah. Like they, they never go full with that. Yeah. Uh, so don't get too excited. No, no, no. It's just like, it's just the storyline is progressing well enough that it's gone away from the kryptonite monster of the week to like a flowing story. Like you can kind of see the show improving over time. Mm-hmm. <coughs> um, yeah. They set up like Lex more and more yeah. as like the actual antagonist, as opposed to being in the, like the murky gray yeah, so. that he plays with the first two seasons. It's just what I end up watching when um I, I'm by myself, um, you know, or like, like Ansel's watching whatever she's watching more Dallas Cowboy stuff. Um, and, and when I'm not paying attention to that, um, I went back and dabbled in Destiny 2 a little bit more just to get myself to that GM level, the Grandmaster level that I wanted to. Got there, tried that Grandmaster level a couple times. Um, I think we can complete the strike. We didn't complete it the five or six times we tried it. Um, but that was mostly due to Randy, who's a guy that we play, I play a lot of Destiny with. His internet is just like in the Grandmaster. After about 20 minutes, he gets kicked out all the time. So it's like uh, something about his router and uh, something that Wyatt called like packet loss. Yeah, uh-huh. yeah, that makes and it's sense. and it's a uh, it's a pretty big thread with like Comcast routers and Destiny, um, like where Destiny is like more punishing to packet lust, and so he's mm-hmm. losing. He must something must be happening. So hopefully he gets a different router. Um, but um, and then Owen and I have been playing a lot of Luigi's Mansion Three. Um, so that That's has good. that that has a co-op functionality. Where the second how is the co-op? Is it baby co-op like most Nintendo games? Uh, cause Nintendo kind of is notorious for being like, yeah, the second player is there. Uh, uh, not, not really, really because much. there's a lot of things. So the second player, you can play it solo. You can switch back and forth between Luigi and goo Luigi, who is made out of like slime. Um, mm-hmm. but then when you play in co-op, one person's Luigi, one person's goo Luigi. There are certain things that goo Luigi can only do. Mm-hmm. So that's not as much baby as like, I'm like, okay, Owen, you got to go through, like he can squeeze through like metal gates or metal fences or. You're not or, dragging him through. He has to actually do He has stuff. to help. Yeah. I'm like, okay, I need you to suck this up and pull this rope. And it has its pros and its cons. I love my son, but he's almost six and he needs to know his left and his right that's a little bit better. That's a good sign. When you, every time you talk about playing co-op with your family, like, you're like, I love my wife. I love my son. Um, he's at the point where like we get to bosses and he's like. I want to take a break, and I'm like, all right, fine, turn your controller off or whatever. That's a pain in the ass is to get in and out of the co-op. That sucks. Mm-hmm. Um, it's not drop and drop out? No. Okay. Like, you have to, like, That's go awesome. to the menu and do it, and, like, it's it's weird. You can, like, disconnect controllers and then it just does it. Um, in order to, to turn it on in the game, you have to go down to the basement lab and do it. I found out there's a way to fast travel through the menu to do that, but still you have to go there to do it instead of just, like, turn the controller on, let me play. But um, So then I'll beat the boss. And he'll be like, oh, I want to check out the next floor. And I'm like, wait, like, you got to help me do this hard work. Like, I'm not going to like just beat the boss for you. And you say you want to take a break. And then when I beat the boss, you're like, oh, wait, we got another elevator button. I want to see the next floor. <coughs> um, yeah. Really good job by Nintendo in general. Like each floor in this hotel is super unique. 
like in terms of safari levels and like uh like a beanstalk style level and um like a casino like level like just every floor has its own unique thing really interesting boss fights i mean at its core it's still vacuuming up a ghost and mashing a to, to beat the ghost until you beat it um but uh each like just the content is just impressive and it you know you always see that with nintendo and it gets deeper and deeper um so it's been it's been good uh it's definitely been a cool investment through gamefly for that yeah yeah i yeah, I've been meaning to cancel my game fly just because I haven't really been using it. Yeah. Uh, but I, I, every time I'm about to cancel game fly, I, I like look at my queue. I'm like, oh, let me just play that game. And then I, I just don't play it. I'm strictly using it for the switch, obviously, because I own a discless S box and a, and a digital only PlayStation. Um, it's been yeah. really kind of annoying lately. I, I'm st- slightly just every once in a while, I slightly regret that decision of going full digital only on the consoles. When I see like Sackboy on sale for like 30 bucks and I'm like, Damn it! <laughs> yeah, yeah. But at and the I'm same time, like, where... I'd be too tempted just to trade it in, like after after I play it and beat it, you know. Yeah, yeah. Uh, but eh, Plus has been pretty good. Mm-hmm. Game Pass is pretty good. So like, I, I just, you've been finding both stuff. companies just need to do a better job of paying attention to the digital to the retail sales and just match them. Like I don't understand. I, <laughs> like I I hate how much like the Xbox Store is a laggy piece of shit Mm -hmm. most of the time and i just want to give them money and then a playstation store is like good fucking luck finding anything right you know they're like both stores are like they refuse to take my money in different ways and it's kind of frustrating but i mean if i I if i'm sony the app's easier if i'm sony or i'm microsoft and i see gamestop walmart target even if i'm nintendo mark my game down to like 40 bucks which is their which is their right just match it (laughs) Like we do it at, yeah, our, at my it. company, like, we match online. We have dynamic pricing. Just change the price. Like I would have bought and, and Sackboy for forty dollars. Like, and and most likely Sackboy was on sale as soon as Amazon put it up for sale. Yeah. GameStop put it up for yeah. sale. Walmart put it up for sale. Like they can easily be more fluid with that. And you make do money they, off do of flash it. Sales like, anymore? Like, no, I haven't seen a flash sale yeah. in forever. Especially especially digital yeah like they make money off it no matter what i'm so, like come on like yeah i wish they were a little better at that yeah unfortunately we get and me then a they do t- the thing w- ton of money like uh, i i mean like just impromptu wario stuff all day long they'd get me yeah yeah i i wish or, or at least if they like playstation still had the amazon storefront that they had before where you could buy digital codes from amazon yeah. like that was really nice because amazon would put those on sale pretty frequently uh, but yeah, I totally agree. Like they're they're definitely missing something uh, or missing money that they could get. I would buy more games on my PS5 if that was the case. Yeah, I mean, or think about Xbox it. If, like Wario does it all the time. He tweets out Zelda Breath of the Wild on sale at GameStop, Target, Walmart, Amazon, all these links, and then just say US eShop. Like the people that are looking at it on Twitter on their phone would just buy it on the digital front because they don't gotta go nowhere. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> if anything, like the Switch is probably the best place for sales like every week yeah. there's like hundreds and hundreds of sales uh but like uh playstation like playstation would do their big sales but they'll be like the same sale will last like three weeks and you're mm-hmm. just like okay cool but like this new game isn't on sale yet why mm-hmm. uh but yeah i agree with that completely uh anything else uh no i we we haven't got a chance to go back to loki yet and again because we've been so tired and loki makes you think a lot <laughs> so yeah, I'm I'm kind of falling off Loki. Yeah, uh, I mean we we uh, inadvertently fallen off of it, not for any particular reason, other than a couple times my wife and I have been home at the same time for a little bit of uh, a period of time. I'm like, she's like, oh, I I don't want to watch that right now. It has nothing to do with like it's bad or anything like that. It just had to do with she's like, I don't want to focus on anything right now. So. Yeah, I wonder if Wednesdays kind of hurt them so hurt them, uh, like just being like, oh, it's just out on Wednesday. Uh, yeah, I think. Like I was, I always look forward to like Friday because I would sometimes have Saturday off or whatever. Being mm-hmm. like, all right, Friday I'm gonna watch Let's this. To, yeah, and, and we, 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 I mean, with WandaVision and and um, Falcon, <laughs> Falcon, uh, Mighty Ducks, all of them. It was kind of one of those things where like, uh, yeah, I was near the end of the pandemic. Anyways, restaurants weren't, really, but it was like Friday night. We're getting some some cool meal, and we're sitting at home, and it was like our dinner date show. Like that's yeah, just, no, same. Like, yeah. It was like we would order pizza that day. Yeah. Uh, but now, like, I get home from work on Wednesday, and I'm just like, it's like nine o'clock, ten o'clock. I'm like, oh yeah, Loki's out today, and we'll we'll watch it. But it's 
it's not like before where it's like all right it's friday yep. make sure you have wandavision or mandalorian even Twitter. like yeah, you know. yeah yeah exactly so all right you want to hit us with some questions yeah uh first one uh high degree on twitter asks uh i don't know if i believe there will be a switch pro all the talk of the switch pro and then when we get an oled switch what do you think uh, do you think there will be a pro version of the switch uh, I mean, um, I think we kind of addressed that, where you feel like it's going to be a Switch 2. Yeah, I think it's going to be a, the Switch 2, Switch Pro, uh, but I don't think we're going to see that until 2022, 2023. I think this right now is like a stopgap Switch. Um, you mentioned it earlier, like there was like five or six iterations of the 3DS alone. Uh-huh. So we're on, what is this going to be? Like uh, we have Switch, Switch Lite, Switch 2.0, which yeah, was so like, like the quiet remodel. Yeah, so like the fourth and version. Then, so. Yeah, and this is going to be the fourth one. So they're due for like one or two more before we get the next gen Switch. And even then, people got to set their expectations. It's Nintendo. Mm-hmm. Uh, I think the tech that, you know, was leaked in a Bloomberg article of like DLSS uh, improved uh, graphics power. I think that is going to be accurate. But by the time it comes out, it's going to be underpowered again because it's going to be cheap enough for Nintendo to mass produce. So it's going to be the scenario where it's like, yes, we will get the 4K 60 frame switch, but it's going to be in two or three years when like we're kind of over games being 4K 60 frames. And we're going to be like, why isn't this running 120? Yeah, like Like, Damon in our Facebook group is like, does Mario really need 4K? The answer to that is no. But would Zelda and Metroid benefit from it? Uh, Yeah. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. But it does do, do they need 4K right now? No. Uh, could they use 4K in like four or five years? Yeah. And yeah. that's probably when we'll, we'll truly get like yeah. a 4K thing from the Nintendo. Yeah. Uh, uh, Stefan asks, uh, what is the most annoying aspect of video game AI? Uh, then his answer is, uh, mine is how NPCs never walk or run at the same speed as your character. So you must either speed up or slow down to keep up with them. So a leisurely walk turns into a frustration-filled romp across the game world. I 100% agree with this. <laughs> I think this is number one uh, on my video game AI thing. It's why I kind of stopped playing Red Dead Redemption 2. Um, I mean, I really can't think of anything right away that like annoys me um, in terms of AI. Uh, bad lip sync, which I guess is not AI, but it's like the game's fault. In terms of, like, yeah. the voices matching the mouth. What, what about when you have, like, a game uh, where you have a companion AI and they don't move where you want them to move and they kind of break immersion? I had this happen a lot in, like, The Last of Us yeah. where you're doing a stealth thing and then Ellie's just standing in the middle, but she's invisible to everyone because that would <coughs> mess up the AI. Game breaking, uh, like, immersion breaking stuff like that uh, really like bothers me uh when like the ai is just like no one notices or when the enemy ai uh only focuses on you and they don't focus on your like squad mates Mm -hmm. or your squad mates just don't they do no damage to the enemy to where it's just like oh okay i guess only my bullets are the ones that are going to count in this scenario i have a lot of problems with ai yeah there's there's definitely some i I think it's gotten tremendously better over the last couple years but um i i i can't imagine what that's like to program so <laughs> oh yeah no no it's definitely i'm not blaming developers on that i know it's hard uh but just thinking about like red dead and i swear the speed that npcs walk sometimes is a speed your character can't even walk so you're just like running in a circle around them because it's yeah. like oh you got to deliver this whole monologue and we got to walk all the way across town this mm-hmm. this is a bad idea <laughs> uh so I, I definitely get frustrated with AI. All right. So those are our questions. You can send those using hashtag Ask Digital Days. Again, I'm sorry. I'm getting short of breath again for some ridiculous reason. Um, I guess the bronchitis is still hanging around. Um, spotlight for this week. Ratchet and Clank Rift Apart spoiler cast. It's in the feed. Uh, go ahead and listen to that. Let us know your thoughts, feedback on that. That would be super helpful. So give that a listen. Uh, don't listen to it if you haven't beat Ratchet. That's your warning? Yeah, it's a spoiler cast yeah. for a reason. And you get another warning when you get at the beginning of the episode. So don't tell me yeah. I didn't warn you. He's trying, guys. He's trying. <laughs> um, you can follow the, us on social media. The main account is at Digital Days Pod. Michael's is at the first MJC. 
Mine is at Good Dave Hunt. Facebook group, Discord server, Patreon is all linked in the show notes. So check those out. While you're there, consider leaving a review like we mentioned at the beginning. Twitch, uh, twitch.tv slash digital days gaming. Uh, you can go to there. And if you have Amazon Prime, you can sub, sub to us for free. If you don't have Prime, you can sub to us that way. Follow us. That's free. Um, and we have an affiliation with Twitch, so that helps another way to support us. Uh, with that said, you got anything else? No, no. Uh, just looking for more games to play. Uh, hopefully I will do another safe to spoil soon once I decide which game to play. <laughs> nice. And also find someone who's crazy enough to play that game. If you replay Dead Space, I might do it. Yeah, I mean, it's on Game Pass, so yeah. we might might want to do that. Although, I do, uh, wanna, although you know, I do start overnights on Sunday, so we'll have to see what my time looks not, like. So. Yeah, it might not work. Yeah, so, all right. I hope everyone has a great week. Keep moving forward. I'll be a dick.